Howdy folks and welcome back to World of Warships with the Mighty Jingles and today is the first day of EpicCon. By the time you see this video I'll be browsing the convention floor in Frankfurt and... Fra Frankfurt? No, I'm sure there's an extra R in that. Um, <laughs> Frankfurt. Uh, and having a great time. Hopefully I'm going to get to meet a few of you there. But on with today's video. This is... well, this is the last game that I played in the Hatsuharu before they turned it into a fairly mediocre tier 6 gunboat. And that made me really sad. Not just because I had a tier 7 destroyer that suddenly became a tier 6 destroyer, I got compensated for that, but I'd finally fully upgraded the Hatsuharu and started to like it. Playing a stock Hatsuharu was not a pleasant experience at all. On the plus side, it was fairly fast, and it was a fairly sneaky ship, but the torpedoes weren't particularly good, the guns were absolutely terrible. Uh, and it wasn't really until you'd unlocked the hull and the torpedo upgrade that, that you really started to get a feel for what this ship was capable of. And of course by the time I had unlocked the hull and the torpedo upgrade and was starting to get a feel for what this ship was capable of, Wargaming went and dropped it down the tier and turned it into a gunboat. And not a particularly good gunboat either. Much has been made about the Japanese gunboat destroyer line's ability to fire undetected. And it's true that they do have a shorter um, detection radius when firing the guns than comparable other destroyers of the same tier. But certainly at tier 5, 6 and 7, that's counterbalanced by the fact that the range of the guns is terrible. So they still get spotted when they open fire, unless they're sitting in a smokescreen, or unless you've got a 15-point captain with the Tier 5 concealment skill. And let's face it, most people don't have 15-point captains with the Tier 5 concealment skill on Tier 5, 6 and 7 destroyers. Once you hit Tier 8, the concealment module becomes available, and then you can start taking advantage of the ability to fire the guns while remaining undetected. But the vast majority of players are just never going to experience that. Certainly not at Tier 5, 6 and 7. But that's now, and this was then, back when the Hatsuhara was a Tier 7 torpedo boat. I'm capping Charlie, and we've spotted an enemy Kirov-class cruiser, but he's miles away and no immediate threat. And it looks like there are a few enemy ships heading in this direction. Paying attention to the cap counter. That's going to warn me if an enemy destroyer, and there are three on the enemy team, sneaks into the cap circle with me. Right now, we're doing all right. The team are capping Alpha, Bravo, and Charlie. And my capture progress is still accumulating, which means there's nothing else in the cap circle with me. Keeping an eye on those enemy ships. Torpedoes are ready. I'm going to have capped soon. There's more enemy ships closing in. And bingo, we've capped. So, time to start hunting some ships. I'm going to fire some torpedoes at the Kirov once he's in range. And, I don't know if you noticed, but our carrier's strike aircraft just spotted the enemy Farragut. So, and that's good news. Looks like we're about to capture Bravo as well. Nope, Bravo is contested and progress in capturing Alpha has been stalled. So, I'm the only one on the team so far to successfully capture a flag, but that's a lot of enemy ships closing in on Charlie. It's probably not going to stay captured for long. And the Kirov has turned, and so all of those torpedoes are going to miss, but he's taken a battering from a battleship. There goes the Farragut. We still hold Charlie. For how long? I'm not sure. Yep, the Kirov is down. Alright, that's good news. Our cruisers are steaming in to defend Charlie. We've got a Kirov and a Konigsberg there, but they've been spotted, and that's a bunch of enemy battleships firing back at them, so they cannot really hold this position for very long. They're going to be forced to retire. You can see them taking hits. The Kirov over there has taken a lot of damage. The Konigsberg just got straddled by possibly the Scharnhorst over there, so they're going to have to fall back. And somebody, probably the Farragut, in fact, there he is, you can see him, he has sneaked into the cap circle. And he's on the far side of the island, so he's out of line of fire, and he's disappeared. So while those battleships are shooting up our retreating cruisers, I'm going to pop some torpedoes around the side of that island, just in case, and I'm going to sneak back into Charlie to arrest the recapture progress. Our cruisers can't do it. They can't repel firepower of that magnitude. Oh, sorry, I've got to get the Star Wars quotes in whenever I can. But they can't see me, because I'm in a sneaky little Japanese destroyer. 
Hello, torpedoes? Oh, no, that's all right. That's fine. They're never going to hit me. And I have completely wasted my smoke screen here, by the way. I'm far enough away from all of those enemy ships that they won't see me unless I start shooting at them. I can fire torpedoes, that's no problem. Just put some torpedoes in the water against the Nagato over there. But while they will not see me at this kind of range unless I start shooting, my guns don't have the range to shoot at them anyway. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the smoke screen was a complete waste of time. And that's when I spot the Farragut. And he's just sitting there. He's not concealed. So, well, the guns are pointing in this direction anyway, and yet again, waste of a smoke screen. Now I have been spotted, so I need to keep moving, but he's firing in the other direction. And I've scored a couple of hits on him before he even realises that he's taken fire and fires up his engines. Now, of course, he is going to start shooting at me. But every time I hit him, I'm arresting his capture progress. I can't stay inside the cap circle with a Farragut shooting at me. I mean, he's got far more guns than I have, but I'm keeping him spotted. Put some torpedoes in the water, you never know your luck. But I think I've knocked out his engine. Managed to avoid fire. Yep, there's smoke and flames coming from his funnels. His engine has been knocked out, so those torpedoes are probably going to miss. He's just not moving fast enough. It'd be nice if I could set him on fire, but I've only got one gun that can fire on him while I'm... And I've set him on fire. Fantastic. Okay, he is now repaired. So his engines are back up, but... Too late for him to gain speed and... Oh, who put that ship there? <laughs> Crap! And I'm still spotted because I just fired. Wait, no. No, I'm not. Wait, I am. Oh, bugger. Bugger, 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 bugger. And stop firing. And now I'm not spotted. Okay, that, that could have gone hopelessly and hilariously wrong. But I got away with it. Didn't manage to kill the Farragut, however. He's still in there capping Charlie. We hold Alpha. It looks like the enemy are trying to recapture Bravo, but progress has been stalled. Well, since it seems I'm going to live, I need to find a target for these torpedoes. The Scharnhorst is closer, but he's just turned in. He's heading behind that island. The Nagato is not yet in range. And he's taking a battering. We've got a bunch of battleships who are just hugging the back of the map behind me. I'm going to find the torpedoes past the island. If the Scharnhorst slows down or changes course slightly, they may hit him. You never know your luck. Although if he does continue on that course and speed, they're going to sail behind him, and they'll all miss. For once, however, it turns out that being in a battleship and adjusting your course and speed when there are destroyers around ends up being the wrong thing to do. I'm trying to reacquire the Nagato as a target. There he is. And those torpedoes are actually looking fairly good. I fired three at a 10 kilometer range. And two of them hit him. <laughs> yeah, for once it turns out that actually adjusting your course and speed when you're in a battleship was the wrong thing to do. <laughs> battleship sailors, they just can't win, can they? Right, anyway. Nagato's turn. He's border surfing, the dirty scumbag. Where are our battleships anyway? What are you guys doing back there? I mean, seriously, can you not see? We've lost four cruisers because you guys are camping the back of the map and the cruisers have had to go up and face the enemy battleships. Oh, I don't know. Right, anyway. Oh, there's the Sean Horst and he has taken a lot of damage and um, if you have a look at the damage counter in the top right of the screen, he is still taking damage. I've flooded him twice and he's not repairing it. Unfortunately, the Nagato is no longer a dirty border-hugging scumbag, and he's turned away from the border, which means those three torpedoes are going to miss. But, but what I tend to do in my Japanese destroyers when I'm firing torpedoes at maximum range is I don't unload all of the torpedoes in the water. I always try to keep a torpedo launcher in reserve, because, it, well, if you fire six torpedoes at maximum range, one misses, they're probably all going to miss. And you've got nothing up your sleeve to deal with eventualities like this Scharnhorst coming back around the corner. I popped smoke. Don't have too long to wait before I get a torpedo tube back up. Just a few seconds. Um, the Scharnhorst is probably not going to survive long enough for torpedoes to finish him, so I'll pop those torpedoes at the Nagato. Crap, he's turned the other way. <laughs> 
the first set of torpedoes. He's managed to thread the needle between them. But he's taken some fire from the side. Let's see if we can set him on fire. That would be jolly nice, wouldn't it? If only I had my torpedoes ready to go now. Oh, he's firing. He can't see me, but he's firing blind into the smoke. No fire set. The guns on this thing really are not particularly good. The Scharnhorst is down. We finally managed to set this guy on fire. Is he going to be a noob and repair it immediately? Yes. Yes, he is. Well, noob's a bit harsh. He doesn't have a massive amount of health left. He can't really afford to take much more damage. He was getting a little bit too close, however, so I have nosed out of the smoke screen and popped my final set of torpedoes away. It was within 6.5 kilometres, so I did momentarily get detected. Ran the risk of getting shot up by his secondaries, but I seem to have avoided most, if not, well, not all of it, but most of it. And those torpedoes are actually looking pretty damn good. It's just a shame he doesn't have a huge amount of health left. It would have been nice, but hey, a kill's a kill. Just fired some torpedoes at the Koenig over there. And he's probably not going to last too long either, so I'm not really losing anything by shooting at him. He's the only one in a position to actually shoot at me. Yep, every other enemy ship is on the far side of an island. And we're scoring some hits with the guns. They're not particularly good guns, but if they're pointing in that direction anyway, you may as well use them. And the Koenig's down before my torpedoes get within four kilometres of him. Right. Next, you'll notice that, as I mentioned earlier, I'm staggering the launch of my torpedoes. It takes just over a minute to reload the tubes on this thing, and that's a long time to be sitting around with nothing to do if you fire all six of the torpedoes at the same time. Just about the only time I will fire all six of the torpedoes at the same time is when I'm at point-blank range and I cannot possibly miss, and I need to sink that battleship. Otherwise, I tend to stagger the launch, so I've got a set of torpedoes ready to go every 30 seconds or so. Another Scharnhorst, this time with lots and lots of lovely health. And obviously I don't want him to see me, although I did momentarily get spotted by somebody's catapult fighter, but that gets shot down and I'm no longer detected. So I only popped up on the map for a couple of seconds at most, and he's not necessarily aware that I'm skirting around the side of this island. I'm trying to keep solid cover and concealment between myself and whatever it is I'm firing torpedoes at. Hello? Oh, no. No, that's all right. Just torpedo warning went off. I thought, oh, crap. But it's the Minikaze. That's no problem. Engine boosters just died, but the Hatsuharu was still pretty quick, and I'm able to keep solid cover between myself and the Scharnhorst, so he never, at any point, saw the destroyer that put three torpedoes into him and finished him off. Let's just stop and take stock of the situation for the moment. We outnumber the enemy team 2 to 1 at this point, and yet look at the difference in points. 800 to 250. They've held on to Alpha and Bravo most of the game, and Charlie, the flag that I capped at the beginning of the game, and the one that I've been defending ever since, is the only one that we've managed to hold on to. So, with that kind of difference in points, we really don't want to go losing any more ships. And that's when the Koenig, who was in a 2 versus 1 battleship fight, Rams our Congo, killing them both, and then almost immediately after, their carrier sinks our carrier. Oh, bugger. We still have the 2 to 1 ship advantage, but they're still way ahead on points, and they're gaining more points than we are because they hold two of the flags. So, I've hung around in Charlie long enough. I need to start taking flags back from the enemy team. I'm just about to slip into Bravo and assist in the recapture here. When we spot some torpedoes in the water, that has to be the enemy Hatsuharu. He's got to be out there somewhere. It looks like all of his torpedoes have missed, which was good news for the battleship there, and there he is, and he does not have an awful lot of health left. Our Minikaze is actually shooting at him, which is fantastic news. A lot of the time you'll see Japanese destroyer captains, they, they, it's as if they don't even know they have guns. When the Hatsuharu is on low health like that, you have to take the shot. And I'm hoping for the kill, and no, one shot went long, one shot went short, but the Minikaze is actually the one that finishes him off with his guns. And we've just recaptured Bravo. Just the enemy carrier left, and that's when I spot his aircraft. Now, I don't know if this guy's playing smart, and he's vectored his aircraft off around the outside of the map, and then brings them in in order to make us think that the carrier is in a different location. 
but I don't really want to take the chance, not with three, four waves of strike aircraft, including two waves of dive bombers. So I slow and I pop smoke, and I start opening up with the anti-aircraft guns, and the Hatsuharu has a pretty surprisingly good anti-aircraft defense. And it still does, despite the drop down to tier six and the redesignation as a gunboat. The anti-aircraft guns on this ship are still not bad at all. I mean, it's no Cleveland anti-aircraft cruiser, but as destroyers go, it's fairly respectable. It does not look like the strike packages were going for me, but I'm keeping an eye on them just in case. I'm not convinced they have actually dropped their ordnance, but it does turn out that they were in fact going after one of the battleships. And they're heading straight back the way they came, which would indicate, unless that carrier player is exceptionally sneaky, it would indicate that he is in that direction. But have a look at the score now. Yeah, we're at 960 points, and they're at 423. I cannot emphasize enough how important it is to capture and hold flags in World of Warships. This situation was completely reversed just a couple of minutes ago. And that's how quickly the situation can change if you capture and hold on to those flags. Ominikaze is now capping A as well, and in retrospect that's exactly what I should have done rather than chasing the kill on this Ryujo because we're now at 990 points, 993, we're about to cap Alpha, that's even more credits and experience for the Minikaze and I could have had a share of that, but instead I chose to go chasing after the Ryujo and I couldn't even get close enough to fire the guns at him, let alone launch torpedoes before we reached a thousand points and won, still, just shy of 10,000 experience. I'm pretty happy with that. And this was the point where I thought, you know what, the Hatsuhari gets a lot of bad press. It's not a particularly popular ship, but fully upgraded. It's not bad, and I kind of like it. And then Wargaming <laughs> dropped it down to tier 6 and turned it into a gunboat. And a pretty mediocre gunboat at that. And that made me very sad. So that was the last hurrah of the Hatsuharu in World of Warships. Before we go, I thought it was worth mentioning that there is still time to get your hands on one of two Arotsi Vanatsa World of Tanks branded gaming chairs. Very expensive pieces of furniture. You won't get any change out of 349 euros for one of these things in the World of Tanks shop. But I have two of them to give away, courtesy of Arotsi and Wargaming EU. I must stress, however, that due to delivery limitations, this is EU only. If you do, however, fancy your chances of winning a very, very swish set of bum warming furniture, then pop down to the link in the video description where you can enter the giveaway and have a chance of winning one of these two chairs. You don't have much of a chance <laughs> of winning one of these two chairs. I do only have two of them, and so far 12,600 people have entered. But, well, you'll have more chance than if you don't enter, so what have you got to lose? And that's it for today, folks. As always, take care, and I'll catch you next time.